Secretary, he, uh, we didn't really discuss this because there was no real controversy or issue based on, it was the vote or election of the PSBA officers, and Brett voted for us in the, when the last couple of weeks, Brett? Is that correct? It was about two weeks ago. About yes. two weeks ago, and that was toward the candidate. So there were, there were no challenges. Uh, it was the same, it was the recommended slate. The only challenge we had was in the office of president of PSBA, and it was the same person who challenged the previous year, and when we voted last year, we really, there was no real excitement or, or concern from us as a group. So he voted for us as an entity uh, that we accepted the slate as it was. So uh, again, I'm just informing you of that. I appreciated that because had not, we had until 11 o'clock, or excuse me, 11.59 tonight in order to send in our ballot. Uh, the second thing relates to the uh, platform for the PSBA conference. Again, the whole process has changed quite substantially. Uh, based on membership, which includes our input, uh, PSBA for the, this coming year is focusing on a pension crisis, charter school reform, uh, that includes the removal of uh, equities in the system, uh, charter school formula for special education because there's really an extreme overpayment issue that's just tearing school districts apart, and the fourth priority was the uh, adequate and, uh, and fair funding. Uh, what they've done with these priority issues they're focusing on, but this is being approached in a wide variety of areas, not only through our legislature, legislature legislature but through lobbies and through local governments and so on so it's a mass attack per se to try to improve in all these areas it's also obviously more well defined and that's we can draw that information up at any time from our from the PSBA website but now breaking it down into platform issues as you remember in the past it used to be hundreds of platform issues that we would have to break down in, in areas but they've simplified the whole process just like they simplified the whole process of the elected leadership and how the regions work and that type of thing. So I'll just cover these very quickly. Uh, the first area is relates to as far as the legislative priority is. They're pushing with our legislators to deal with effective child-centered public education. And that's broken down into curriculum and instruction, student assessment, graduation requirements, special education, and career and technology. The second area that under legislative legislative efforts are strengthening the work of, the, of local boards, and that deals with personnel issues, specifically staffing and evaluation 
collective bargaining, and pension reform. Then it goes also then to school board operations, school construction, safety and discipline issues, and education-related mandates. That's area number two. On a legislative area also, number three, and there are only four, number three is increased equity and accountability, and that's pretty much focused on charter, charter school reform. And the fourth area, again, that's replaced all these mandates, and we used to have hundreds in the past, is secure and adequate and equitable funding. And these are the areas in the uh, funding formulas, in the use of local taxes, in property tax issues, in taxing authority, and in transportation. Uh, also, it, it, that's going to be held at the, uh, these will all be approved on the first day of the PSBA conference. Um, and along with that also will be uh, nine amendments to the bylaws. Uh, that's all based on organizational. There's nothing in their controversy, nothing in there that affects us in any way, shape, or form, or inhibits or threatens, uh, threatens us in any way, or even benefits, well, benefit possible only because the organization and efficiency of that organization. Um, I will say that with the conference coming up to conclude that um, when I'm there, some things I think may be worthwhile for us that I'll bring back are they have a, 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 a facility uh, referendum which uh, they're working on, which I thought might be an interesting uh, how it's being approached. The school district was able to pass a $70-some million dollar referendum in their school district through a, 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 a tremendous process. And if we have to, have to deal with that, and we've come close a couple times, I think it would be worthwhile that we gather as much information to be knowledgeable about that as possible. The second one I thought was about an active shooter drill. Uh, several school districts have actually gone through and brought their community safety organizations together, police force, emergency, and so on, and actually have done that to duplicate and, and prepare for uh, events that uh, have happened, unfortunately, too close to us. So I think that may be a worthwhile process also. I'll provide information on that when I come back. Uh, obviously, school law, Mr. Rungo and his firm will be presenting a, a, a school law summary to all the uh, PSB representatives in that area uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. There's something on cyberbullying, apparently some new things to deal with that that we can handle that may be worthwhile in the school district. A couple more things are expulsion options. I'm skeptical about that because you've heard about that the expulsion does have use and value. Is there something opposite that or something new or brand new that may work? Maybe. We'll see. It seemed interesting. And a couple others were uh, career technology explosion. That has really caught on. And Mr. Rattusi will be excited about that because the high employment rate has been shown by career technology graduates is overwhelming compared to our typical high school graduates and all because they're going more and more into the tech field and, and, and they're analyzing and evaluating where the jobs are probably far better than a lot of institutions, including our four-year schools in the area. So they're getting a high emphasis because they are so effective, and so we're learning more strategies in that area to try to make it more appealing to our own students. So there's no stigma that we've known over the years to be assigned to that. And the last area is on the Western PA Summer STEM Academy. That's come out in a local school system. Uh, it, I believe it may be Mount Lebanon, but they're trying to draw on all the students from Western PA through the summer and to draw them in to enhance the overall regional resources of students for uh, the, the STEM approach. So we have some value on that too, maybe we'll get some of our kids involved. But that's where I'll be going in that direction, and that's all I have to report, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Trey. Any plan con news? Dr. Trey, any plan con news? Plan con, you know, yes, the plan con. They're very close, as, as uh, skeptical I am about the success and the capabilities to get anything done at our legislative level. Uh, they're very close to getting plan con revisions being taken care of. There's no money, but they're simplifying the yeah, process. That's, that's they they're simplifying the process. They did release $21 million last week for that yeah, I was going to say, I thought I heard they that. They released. That? that was a release. Million they released. That's to catch up the many schools that are ahead of us that have been that's paying, minuscule. Out, it is. paying out of their debt. It's more than nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Th th it is. Thank you, th th thank you, Brett, for not letting me become too negative. They did release the money to take yes, care of our indebted colleagues who have been paying out of their pocket because they didn't have the money at a time of debt. We're not going to see it, in my opinion. That's it. I think I'm, that's all I have, Madam President. Okay, thank you, Dr. Trey. Mr. Petrucci, thank Career you, Tech. Thank you, Madam President. You got the mess in your packet. The project's about 99% uh, complete. Wow. Um, I mean, I'll be 97. It's at the upper 90s, anyway. Mr. Dr. Trey, thanks for your comment uh, for the graduates of uh, Central Vote Tech because there is a definitely high employment rate. That, uh, it's, it's very well. There's a couple areas really high, almost 100%. You're doing well. Um, we sent out bids for the cosmetology. I explained before the cosmetology. Uh, as you know, about a year and a half, two years ago, whenever I asked this 
our board here for tonight got unanimous support, which I still like to thank you for. We had to have all nine boards unanimously approve the six million dollar bond issue to uh, put in boilers, um, uh, heat chillers, uh, the lighting, etc. And you know, six million dollars not doesn't go very far, but. We had to get down to six million. We were originally at nine million. We had to get down to six million because there were two school districts that had the unanimous vote that would not go along with it. So we finally did all of the homework and all the campaigning, and they said, "We get down to six million, we'll vote for it." So okay, we got it down to six million, and it was unanimous, and that work was done. But to do that, one of the things we had to drop was cosmetology. So now we're going to go to cosmetology for our fund balance. Our fund balance is approximately four hundred some thousand dollars. We're estimating the cosmetology bid is going to be put out of uh, uh, August 25th. The bids are uh, 30 days, September 25th. We're going to vote on it at our October 15th meeting. The, um, the work is uh, going to be done in the evenings, and uh, we hope to have this work done before, uh, we hope that by springtime, that all done evenings, and that's, it, it should be complete by that time. So, and, uh, well, they said project completion, I have January 30th, but I hope that's very true. Okay. the. Um, I also got some enrollment figures for you. Um, enrollment is went up again this year, uh, approximately a uh, thousand kids. That's a 14% increase. What they're saying in Penn Trafford, we are third highest in the total enrollment, but we're number eight as far as students at uh, Central Bo Tech. Number one is Hemfield. Number two is um, believe it or not York. Uh, number three in enrollment is, uh, is Norwin. Number four is, um, let me get the four here on myself, South Morn. Number five is Greensburg Salem. Number six is Bell Vernon. Number seven is Mount Pleasant. Number eight is Penn Trafford. And number nine is Jeanette. The, and, here's the, and here's how the shops go as far as the enrollment. Number one is uh, automotive uh, mechanics. Uh, number two is cosmetology. And number three is health, occupation. Number four is protective service. Number five is welding. And number six is uh, auto body. So this that's how that's the most the top six I think as far as I don't know if they wrote that on the all the twenty four shops. But that's the top six in the enrollment of the um, cosmetology. And I'll have the figures for you for um, the acceptance of bid for our next meeting, what we're gonna pay for the cosmetology open stage within two hundred thousand dollars and um, I'll pay two fifty at the most. And I cannot thank uh, Carl Scooty enough. He has been so, so helpful. He's a school director from uh, Yonk. He works at uh, Bettis. And he's, uh, I'm sure Jay may know him better than I know him, but he's a very, very astute person. Big Harley Davidson guy, but he's, he's saved us a lot of work and a lot of money, and he's on top of this. And he says, if we don't do this now, the cosmetology, by 2016, the code's going to change, and you could have maybe a possibly a 15 or 20% increase. So he pushed this through to get cosmetology done. And uh, I'll give you more updates in our meeting is uh, October 15th of this month. That's all I have, Madam President. Well, while you have the floor, you want to give us Stanford's sure. uh, record? Okay. Uh, our meeting was on the um, September 29th, last Monday. Um, Halloween parade is going to be the 26th, and the, at the American Legion. Uh, all the gifts and prizes for the kids. Uh, we take care of all that through the auction. The, um, uh, this, oh, sorry, I should have started with what? Our playground this past summer, highest participation rate in our playground in our history. They said that the rate was so high that we had some excellent young directors. And that, uh, you can't believe how much that makes a difference, but that was really a big benefit. And uh, trick or treat night's the 31st. It's that way in every place. And that's the first playoff night. And uh, the sixth day, the fire mural lines up, you know, to help us to make sure the traffic flow the kids going across, stopping the traffic, et cetera. That's all ready to go. And uh, that that's should be good. And our fund balance, we had a bail for our attorney, I mean, our engineers for um, $5,000 Paramount Playground. We should know by the end of November if we get $120,000 grant or not. And right now, our ending fund balance is $30,909. That's all I have, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pacuzzi. Ken Burrow. Anything? Okay. I'm sorry. Ken Burrow? No report. We, we were, I apologize, Nick. We were amazed at some of the numbers you were talking about with the new program. Oh. We just had some questions that 
I guess I should ask you, with regards to the folks in the gas industry, what category would those kids fall under with regards to, is it welding or we just, fitting we just, or what? We were just commenting that the, the placement for those kids is tremendous. Okay, let me see. Because we did discuss that tonight. It's, um, let me see if I can get this straight. Because we did for a second here. Logistics, warehouse, construction trades. I brought that up before. I said, that was definitely brought up. It's not listed. Our line is separate. Welding is separate. Bank mechanics. Microtronics, that's the robots. Uh, that was definitely brought up as far as the uh, wind, uh, solar power, wind power, um, uh, natural gas. That was all discussed, and it is in the category. I just thought it would be in the top six. I agree. I, I thought it would be number one. Well, no. I didn't know where, but I just thought it would be in the top yeah. six because of the amount of job opportunities there are. Yeah. And Nick, I think it is. It's under an obscure name that, that they're all grouped together, but so many of those kids are so needed, they're out in internships almost from the onset. Now, I they're working for companies and organizations. I want to do shops for you. I'll just go right in athletic order. Auto collision, automotive, carpentry, uh, commercial, and, uh, and uh, uh, commercial arts. Uh, computer science, construction trades, that's uh, building maintenance to my knowledge. Cosmetology, culinary, electrical, graphic design, health occupations, horticulture, heating, ventilating, logistics and warehouse, machine trades, that's a big one too. Masonry, mechanic, me mechatronics, I think that's ro robotic. Uh, painting and decorating, plumbing, power line, protective services, uh, that's your health service, etc. Sports therapy and welding. It would make sense, Nick, that plumbing would be a good candidate for that. Uh, I'm around that industry a lot, and there's a lot say of that welding probably, plumbing. Right? Plumbing, yeah, plumbing, plumbing and welding. Welding, yeah. welding is number five. Protective services. Oh, welding was number five? Yes. Oh, well, that's probably what it is, right there. Yeah. <coughs> well, there's one where we, because there we discussed the solar energy, the wind energy, and uh, Marcellus Shell, the drilling for uh, natural gas. Etc. We did this. We did discuss all that. Okay. Especially when we put the new uh, uh, boilers in, and their auxiliary um, pump is uh, natural gas now. Remember, before I told you, gentlemen, the ladies and gentlemen, it was submerged, and we had to take it out because it's of contamination. We had to take it out. But I will definitely bring out. I will uh, mention it. Sir. Thanks. A good question. No, Thank thanks. You. I probably should have asked you instead of Jay, but he was next to me. No booty report. Jay knows all, so I was hoping yeah, I could perfect. cut back on it. That's all, that's all. all right, any other comments? Um, okay, now Pete That's me. Uh, um, a lot of interesting stuff at Pete I think many of you will be excited about what's going on with Pete Tart these days. Um, as you all heard, the school district has decided to take P the PTARC building back from um, PTARC. Um, the PTARC building in years has been quite the financial well, strain. The school district is going no, to take PTARC. Well, I was going to kind of elaborate on that. Okay, but go ahead. You want to say? The PTARC board met and we decided that the, it was time to actually not have the PTARC building anymore right. due to the cost and all the updates to the building. Right. Um, and I was kind of getting there a little bit more around. Oh, more around. That's, no, that's okay. For example, year to date, the income at the Peak Tark building has been $8,700. Expenses, if you exclude the building loan, the um, payment we, uh, we made an advance payment on the building loan, if, I mean, not the building loan, the parking lot loan, if you exclude that, the expenses are $17,700. So you have a $9,000 hole that they are running in on the PTARC building alone. So at a previous meeting, we had talked about at the PTARC meeting, you know, give, giving it back to the school district. Um, what we've learned over the last month or so is that when PTARC 
is done using the building. Uh, based on the deed from 1995, it actually goes back to the um, Penn Township, the municipality of Penn Township, and they have the option to use it for a municipal purpose. If they are not interested in using it for any municipal purposes, it then comes back to the school district. That being said, Level Green Fire Department, and this was discussed at our PTARC meeting this afternoon, has expressed interest in using the building. Um, number one, we're not 100% sure that qualifies as a municipal service, since it is a volunteer fire department, and we are looking into <coughs> that, and we're thinking it does, um, but we're not 100% sure. And number two, there's loans on the building, and that, so that all will have to be worked out. But we also had another person step forward. Um, Dino D'Amico was also interested um, and wants to be kept in the loop. I think he's the owner of Snap Fitness, if I'm correct. Um, so a lot of possibilities going on here that we're working through. So basically more to come on that. Um, but because of that, taking the PTARC building away, getting that financial drain away from them, and some other changes that we are being, that are being made within the PTARC organization, the contribution, we worked on the budget today for 2015, and the overall contribution requirements from the different um, participants has been reduced. The school district, our amount is being reduced from $46,000 a year to $36,000 a year. So overall, the reduction is approximately 23%. So all the municipalities ought to be happy about that. Um, the whole budget as a, as a whole, the whole budget as a whole, that's redundant, but the whole budget is, the overall budget is down also approximately 23%. Okay, um, a little bit more on some financial stuff. Um, the fund balance as of right today, is approximately 73, 74,000. Last year it was 73,000, so we're pretty much the same. Um, Cheryl, at today's meeting, we officially accepted Cheryl's retirement, which will be effective on January 9th, 2015. And we approved a contract for her replacement, um, Linda Byers. Um, did I, did I miss anything? Yeah, no, you can't yeah, you got it wrong. Okay. So, what did they attribute the 10K in savings to for us? Um, well, number one, they're not going to have, um, you know, we're replacing Cheryl with Linda Byers, and there's going to be a reduction in salary. Okay. Okay. There's going to be a reduction in salary because of, you know, less experience, whatever. Also, um, the township is going to be helping with some of the financial bur um, running some of the finances for them, so that has eliminated some responsibility from um, the employees. Um, I think most of it is going to be between reduction in employee costs and savings of on that PTARC building. Because if you figure if they're losing money, we all, we all share in that loss of money. We're all paying for that. So those are the two biggest components. Oh, the other thing is, um, every once in a while, and you all do this with your home, um, I know I do it with my gas company, you, ch you see check rates, and our, our bills for electric bills have just been climbing up very steeply, and so Cheryl shopped them around, and we are switching suppliers, we're going back to West Penn Power, and she hopes to get a, a nice savings. The biggest savings is coming from the, the building up. Yeah, the building, and a little reorganization. And what's sad about it, the building has the highest number of uh, rentals this year. Yeah. The number but the highest has ever been. But Cheryl also said that, I mean, we're still losing money because <coughs> the costs are just so high to keep that building operational. So that she said, if we were to keep on using it in the capacity we are, we would have to raise the rent on it to help cover some of these costs. Um, yeah, one of the things that we discussed that was brought up today was the possible um, possibility of Painter Town Fire Hall working or merging with Level Green. I mean, that's just, it's all speculation, and I kind of didn't want to go real far down that path until we sort some things out, and 
have opportunity to meet with the parties involved. Um, but bottom line is, we have interest in the building. Um, it's just a matter of how that works out. And a Level Green, if they do, Level Green Fire Department, if they do take over the building, they are not looking for the building. Uh, they would be more or less looking for that land. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't know. That. We have to discuss that. With them. Yeah. If they if they end up taking the building, they're going to have to assume the parking lot loan. So there are things to be worked out here. And quite honestly, I mean, I don't know if anyone's really talking to anyone. We just received the letter. Yeah. So it's all very preliminary. There's some amount of unknowns. I don't want people. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm not, I'm not saying a whole lot. I like to talk. We don't know a whole lot. Everything. There's a lot of speculation. We just got this letter of interest. Was it last Thursday? I received mine Thursday. Yeah, I see you see the Thursday, so we, very preliminary, very preliminary, a lot of things to be worked out yet. So, and that's all I have, and now Dr. Harris, Community Education Fund. All right, it's that monthly time again where we give our update, and I know um, our next meeting is this Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the high school cafeteria. We always invite new members, and um, Joe invited members last time, and both Sarah and Sally came. See you there, Bill. Come <laughs> so on, now, Bill. Bill, you, Bill. You might want to come as well. It's this Wednesday at seven. And you already helped us before with your um, yes um, donation. So, and that's kind of what the foundation does. So, you're already a step of the game. Uh, we will be having an alumni event again for the October 17th homecoming games. And do you have any more information, Joel? You want to share about that? Or? I don't think I think everybody knows that uh, our big fundraiser is uh, our PT's Got Talent. Uh, we're in the process, I believe, of signing up uh, our talented students, and I believe that uh, we should be having the uh, addition short. additions very shortly. So just keep that uh, in the back of your mind. It's in January. It's a very great, great event. Last year was quite a success, and uh, we have a lot to be proud of the students in this district, and it's a great showcase for. Uh, for the talent that we do have, so circle that date, please. Whatever that date is right now, <laughs> don't have it. But anyway. We'll keep you updated, and that's all I have for the foundation. Okay, thank you, Dr. Harris. Uh, we will not be breaking for an executive session. We met prior to the um, meeting tonight to discuss student matters, personnel matters, real estate matters, and negotiations. <coughs> So we will continue uh, back to Dr. Harris for information. For information, October 17th, that's our first in-service day for teachers. We were doing a district-wide safety drill for all the teachers and admin to practice our emergency management plan. Um, Chief Otto has arranged to do a drill involving our local EMS to give them an opportunity for them to practice what they would do for an emergency at our school district as well. It will give all um, school personnel an option to practice. We had a plan, we reviewed the plan, but this is actually gives us mock emergency involving the police force, the ambulance, and potentially the fire. On that day, we were also having a presentation by Forbes Hospital, um, as well as a drug seminar for the staff to identify the different types of drugs and what to look for. Um, sports season, we got some sports uh, news. This Friday's football game against Shaler will be broadcasted live from Comcast on Xfinity on demand. And it's a big week for the soccer team. Both the boys and girls play Norrin at home this week. The winner of these games will win the section. The boys game is Tuesday at 7.45. And the boys are currently 11-0. And the girls play Wednesday at 7.30. And they're currently 12-1. So exciting games. Please come out and support the teams. How's Great games. How's field hockey doing? An update from field hockey. I can tell you they've lost two games so far. Okay. Uh, they're still in contention, but uh, they have big games coming up against North Allegheny and Pine Richland, and that will determine whether they make the playoffs or not. All right, because they've always had, the last couple of years, they've been so good. Thank you, Brett. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Deer Valley, last week the fifth graders went to Deer Valley. We had an amazing weather. Kids had a great time. We'd like to thank all the volunteers who helped make the trip possible, as well as the school board, and then especially our video kids who did an excellent job. Thank you, Mr. Vincent and crew. Because without you, we wouldn't have a tape of the loss. We've been going since 1990. Next year will be our 25th year, and they're planning a special um, 
jacket or a shirt to sign and attach to commemorate it. It's kind of exciting that we do in five years. Bus safety, I wanted to just share this information with you. Um, we had an accident with our Queen of Angels bus this morning that could have been more severe. As the bus was stopped on Painertown Road, a car came from behind and wanted to avoid hitting the back of the stopped bus. So, so they went off to the right hand side and when they did it, they actually knocked out the door that was open with their side of the car. Why this was scary? The kids just got on the bus. So 15 seconds sooner they were just standing there. So it was all within that time. They actually were just right there on the bus. So just want to remind everyone to please drive safety, watch out for our buses. I know they stop a lot. <laughs> I understand because I I sat behind them at around 1.30 myself saying, who makes the bus here? So, <laughs> so I've done that. So please just be patient. Um, student learning assistance. The petition for the unit clarification that was filed with the Pennsylvania Labor Board on November 15, 2013 by the Penn Trafford Educational Association was officially withdrawn by the association. Uh, we received notice that it was assigned and approved by the Labor Relations on October 1st granting their um, petition to withdraw. Remember last month we approved the memorandum of understanding for our student learning assistance and when we made the motion it sounded like we was including them in the bargaining unit and that was my fault and how the motion was written. Actually we was making the memorandum not to include them into the bargaining unit. So I do apologize for having any error that was um, caused by that. Finally, I have um, Scott Inglis is going to give us an update on on-hand school and the building. Yeah, we just had, uh, on, if you recall a few months ago, we did a presentation on on-hand schools, which is the database software that, that housed all of our data, PSSAs, Keystones, PVOS, and, and, and other data. So our uh, administrator training is going to be on October 14th, so we hope to use that uh, to help us with our student achievement and uh, especially with our growth, which we need to work on. So. I uh, just want to give you an update on that. Look forward to that training. Uh, we also have, uh, I'll give you an update on the construction project. And just in case anybody needs an update on that, on our website every week we put a new uh, mini uh, slideshow on the construction and what's happened the previous week and what's going to happen. So if anybody has any questions and wants an update, uh, you can refer to our district website to get an update there. Uh, it's been going very smoothly. Uh, actually, I'm pleasantly surprised about, about how well the project's been going. Uh, we have some bumps in the road here and there, but you know, Nate Tank, myself, uh, Lobar, the construction company, we all seem to work very well together to resolve any issues that come up. Um, we're ahead of the project in some areas, behind in some areas, but a lot of that is because it's, we just need lead time for in event uh, equipment and windows and things like that. That's what's holding us up. It's certainly not in you know, the construction workers or any lack of effort or anything like that but uh, once this first phase gets done uh, all those issues will be, will be ironed out and we think we'll be caught up on all the phases but we still anticipate the project being done on uh, uh, in august september of uh, 2016 so we're on, on target for that um, one thing i did want to mention is the bus loop will be under is under construction right now but it should be finished up in a couple of weeks we will be paving out there probably uh next week or two and what that will do is all the buses will now come around that parking lot out front. They will not go uh, behind the building. So uh, we'll be meeting with the bus company to um, get a new bus lineup. So the kids are going to have to be reprogrammed on to where they get their bus in the afternoon. Uh, but we'll work that out uh, in the next couple of weeks. But we'll have a new pattern for the buses in the morning. So everything uh, is on pace to work out all right. I'll have uh, Nate and Hank and give us a little bit of update on the whole project. And, and with that new bus pattern, we're going to have a new traffic pattern for cars too because once the bus is opened up, we'll, we, cars will no longer be able to drive the whole way around the building. Yes, and when that bus loop goes in, the whole premise of that is to keep the buses from going around the building. And the reason that is, is we want to start the annex, which is on this area over here. So we want to start the annex and we don't want cars and buses traveling through that construction zone. So we want to make sure that bus uh, loop got finished before the weather uh, got too cold to pave. So now, Probably the end of October, early November, they'll start the annex, start the bigger footer, get the foundation in, and get rolling with that. So that's the whole idea. You can probably notice there's some construction out here, out by the, the dumpster. That is a new preschool area. So the fencing that's going to go for the outdoor play area for the preschool is going in there. So 
Anybody asked you, that's what that construction is going on. Uh, and actually, that's an area that we were planning on doing, but Lobar is just thinking ahead and trying to get ahead of the project and wanted to take care of that while they had some time and had uh, good weather to take care of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and so the update I was going to give is the overall schedule in really good shape overall on the project. I mean, no issues with the finish date that we have. Kind of what's, I guess, it's not really, I guess it's holding up more. It's just the new normal of what construction is anymore. Because what happens is when you bring the contractors on board, they get their submittals together, which is all the product data, things that they need to use. Uh, it takes a while to get from the manufacturers to send it to Hank really fast and reviewing it, making sure it's what was specified, checking out everything, and then sending it back. And it's just the lead times on things. Um, Light fixture is a good example we were talking about today, and I'll talk about that's kind of what we're waiting for, for a band room to be able to turn that back over. Used to be, you could get it right off the shelf for two weeks, you could have everything. Now it's six to eight weeks. It's just one of those things where material, finished material, the stuff you need at the very end is what takes a very long time to get now. That's just kind of, since the economy crashed, no one holds anything on shelving anymore. What they do is when your project order it's the manufacturer makes it, ships it to you directly. So they do it by orders now versus having a lot of stock on the shelf that you could just pull from. So it's kind of what we're dealing with that first couple phases, but what happens is when you get out of the first two phases, you've already ordered everything for the entire project. As you move forward, it's just here. You know, we order all the light fixtures for the project at once. That's how you get better pricing, and then we just have them here. So as we need them in different areas, and that's just one example, but that's as we move forward, it helps out a, a lot. Uh, so the bus loop, to give everyone an update on bus loop, we're planning on the pavers to mobilize next week. First thing they do is it takes them a day or two. They put all the stone down, that's why you don't see it, and then they actually then put the paving on top of that. So, um, and the next week, beginning of the following week, that, you know, worst case, it really weather dependent, you know, looking at my phone, I could see rain all next week. You don't know what it's gonna do. So weather dependent, that'll be, um, uh, and the next week, beginning of the following week. The paving deadline is in November, you know, to beat the cold weather, so we're way ahead of that, so we won't have any issues with that. Uh, they're also gonna try to get that audi auditorium parking lot, that new parking that we added over there done as well. They got a little bit of storm work to do. It's the same thing as long as the weather holds out. They can get that work done, and while the paver's here, they'd like to go ahead and pave that as well so we can turn that back over to you. Um, and then you'll have some additional parking spaces. Uh, the English classrooms are moving along very well. All the uh, main mechanical, electrical, in that area has been pretty much complete at this point. They're just finishing up some small electrical running data. Uh, we started paint. Uh, we're gonna start putting the rest of the, the ceilings back in in that area. And as Scott said, we're waiting on the unit ventilators which come at the end of the month. Um, and also the flooring as well, which will probably come about the same time. Um, so that area should uh, complete at the end of November, beginning of December, we'll be able to turn that over. Just a little bit earlier than we thought. So things are going real well through there. Uh, the administration area, if you walk through there right now, looks completely different. Uh, what we're waiting on there is, um, doors and hardware, which always takes a while to get, and light fixtures again, um, and also the casework for that. Um, so what you'll see is they'll get it painted, ceilings in, and it'll seem like it kind of sits there for a little bit, but that's all finished material, so once it comes in within a week or so, they can complete it and turn it back over. So all the major stuff in that area is completed. The stuff that takes a long time to do, the demolition. Uh, the band area is the same way. Um, if you walk in the bedroom now, they were painting it, getting ready to put the ceilings back in, finishing the small electrical items, then we're just waiting on the flooring and the light fixtures. Uh, the library itself, the library um, mechanical electrical plumbing, rough in is going on, uh, which you may not know is there actually is a lot of rough in <coughs> that library, a lot of them, uh, especially plumbing and mechanical, because all those labs that we do over the summertime, all the utilities feeding can actually come in the library and turn up because the labs are right above it. So, that, so you do have a lot of plumbing mechanical work in there, uh, but we're still scheduled, scheduled to complete that around the beginning of February. Yes, just, we should be able to get, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get in the library uh, in February for our board meetings. And then, yeah. Once the project moves along, our, our long-term plan for board meetings, we have a, a LGI, large group instruction room that's going to go in near the main office. So uh, our, our goal is to uh, move into that area for our board meetings in the future. So uh, next year, we'll, hopefully we'll be down there. Yeah. And while we're waiting for some of those finished materials, our prime contractor's done a really good job, but we're working at some other areas, some areas we're planning on working on for a while, um, just to get ahead. Um, so what Scott was talking about, the preschool and that. <clears throat> fencing that goes around the new playground they're working on right now. They're working on the wall that goes right out here, which actually encloses um, the courtyard out here for the cafeteria and getting that done right now. Um, looking ahead to let you kind of, oh, I almost forgot the annex. So the annex, as soon as the bus loop is done, you're able to drive on it, that's when we'll close that loop row down. We'll start on the annex. If you look out there right now, all the rebar that you need for those concrete foundations is actually already here. They're starting to tie some of it up and get it ready so we can really get a jump on it as soon as um, we can get the bus loop closed the current bus looks close. Uh, looking ahead, as soon as we finish the English areas, we're gonna jump into math. 
Uh, we're also going to try to get a few of the social studies and science classrooms to kind of stack on top of each other done as well. So that'll give us a few additional classrooms done this school year that they weren't planning on having done before. Um, so the goal is to try to get a few more classrooms done. Uh, they're also going to um, start on the nurses area now. If you walk right out of the cafeteria, you'll see the 10th bag room was built. So we, where that bag room is is where the new nurses area goes. So that wasn't scheduled to start after the first of the year, um, but they have some time, so they're going to start that now and get that done hopefully a little bit early. Um, one of the things Scott sent out, I think, before was about some changes. We have had a couple issues of running into the project, nothing major. Um, electrical out of code, so to explain that a little bit more, there's a lot of electrical that we touch in this building. You know, a lot of switches and things that we move. Any of that that's out of code, the contractor's own fixing that as they go through. And they're running new wire, new cabling, any of that, they already own it and they're fixing it. What they're running into is some of the lights, existing lights that we're, uh, that we're not replacing. You know, some of that wiring that we've run into. And you know, it's been small things, but it's how that wire support is. It goes across the grid. The little junction boxes you see in the ceiling um, aren't supported properly, so we've got to run a rod down and connect to that so that they're properly supported. Some little items like that that we found that the electrical inspector wants us to get fixed so everything's up to code before we close off that area. There, there are things that were exposed when they did the demolition. Yeah, until you pull down the ceilings, down, you can't tell. You see things like mm -hmm. a, an electrical box that's, that's supported by a piece of conduit instead of supported by a hanger, and that's, that doesn't meet the, the current electrical codes. So when the electrical inspector comes through, he sees it, he says, we, gotta, we have to take care of that. And if it's an electrical box where the contractor was going into it, like they said, to, to either take wires out of it or put new wires into it, then he would own bringing it up to current code. If it's an electrical box that he was not touching because we weren't doing anything for this project, then it's a box that, that would be an additional cost to fasten or bring up the code. It, it, it doesn't, at one point we thought it might be a, a pretty big type of deal, but as we go through and we look at it, it it's not amounting to a, a large. Just in summary, order. there will be a change order mm -hmm. to address it. So it's going to cost us some money to address yeah. it. We don't think it's gonna be crazy, but you know, and there are some small issues that we've run across, some change orders that are gonna come up and Nate's been keep, keeping, we get credits here and there, we also get negatives and so it's, but we're gonna have some change orders at some point. And it's nothing huge, but uh, we're keeping it under control. Uh, keep in mind, we do have about a $1.2 million contingency uh, to address these kinds of problems, but we, we are running into some change orders. And we're not talking numbers at the 1.2 no. at this point. We're talking numbers in the- Tens of thousands. In the fives to tens of thousands. Yeah. We're not talking big numbers. I mean, for instance, when they, when they also did some demolition, there was a piece over in the band area. The wall goes all the way up to the other side of the deck in some spaces, in other places it doesn't. It, it needs to go all the way up. They're working in that area. We have to tell them to go ahead and do that work now while they're in there. We haven't got the pricing on it yet to go over, but there'll be a small change order for something like that. If it's something that has to happen, there was an existing condition that, that was exposed during demolition. Be careful. That, e that electrical um, change for supporting those box, the original number I saw close was 50,000. Did you say it won't be that much? We don't think so. And the only reason to say we don't think so is because we haven't taken the ceilings out everywhere. But as you can see, the school, we've taken a lot out and we haven't done anything major. Um, we found one feeder line, which basically is a line that goes from one panel to another that needs to be redone. But that's still in the few thousand. That's not in the tens or anything like that. So we're just, we're being conservative because you just never know what you can run into. But it's looking like it's not going to be as bad as we thought. And I don't even think the old code was no, no, they They're wouldn't have, so that's so why we're like, I don't know. Since the recent code, it's, it's the old code. Too. Yeah, yeah. We don't know how it passed. I see that in a few things I'm poking my face in, <laughs> but it's here. It it's here and we're moving forward. Yeah. And that's exactly why there's a contingency for things like that, especially in a renovation. It's something you could never have bid, because if you just said, you know, told the electrical contractor, oh, put some money in for this, it would have been huge. It would have put in hundreds of thousands, not knowing what it was, would have inflated the number. So this is definitely the best way, because as they fix the work, they have us sign off on tickets so we can verify that it's done. I can tell you, Borg, I've monitored many projects over the years, and this is a very difficult type of project to move forward, because anything you change, especially on the outside, you change a parking space, you change uh, dirt work, you change paving, and anytime you change paving, you change storm water management, so it's like a bowl of jello. Anytime something changes, it changes other things. I'm very familiar with that, so hearing what I'm hearing and seeing what I'm seeing, I think 
considering all that is going more smoothly than I anticipate that. That's all I have. If there's any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As far as information, um, two more things. One, um, Tony received, I actually received some positive um, feedback to you from the Veterans Day celebration. Do you want to share the email that you received? Or? Yeah, I received a, uh, an email from a man who attended the reception before the football game where we were honoring the veterans. Actually, at, the, at that evening, he did stop me and thank me for putting together that event. And he sent me an email last week to specifically thank um, Dr. Trey and Mr. Inglace um, for organizing the event. He was extremely grateful and really enjoyed the night and the food, the company, everything. We got a lot of feedback too, and Dr. Trey did an excellent job reading. <laughs> yeah. You can still read. Yep. <laughs> Also, I want to thank uh, Mr. Venton for bringing everyone here to train. How many kids do you have out there? <laughs> I think there's uh, more than this school. Record, but it's also approaching the end of the ninth grade period. So. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> so we do. Do we see some brownie points being earned here? Well, they have tiered assignments or extra credit. So no, it's not extra credit. They have tiered assignments, and that's one of the. This is one of the ones that seems to kind of wait until. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, are we not as exciting as the sports games? Or? <laughs> We're more exciting. You tell us that. This is, I think, the third time we've used this. This is a pretty sophisticated setup. Rather than editing later, we're doing it live on the fly. Yeah. Wow. Here, so. Do you get extra points by making Mr. Petrucci more photogenic? Is that a possibility? You, you better get... <laughs> you guys can make me look good. If you can figure out a way to add height. Some of us need a little help. But we do appreciate you coming out and taking the class and doing everything that you do. We do. Thank you. Um, that's the end of information. Next week on Under Athletics and Extracurricular, we're going to ask you to set a resignation, employee personnel, under budget and finance, approve reimbursement for credits earned, approve expenditure for high school renovation project, approve the Bitney Bowes lease agreement, approve the purchase of the student van, formally approved the school resource officer agreement. There won't be anything to report under buildings, grounds, and safety, employee relations, negotiations, transportation, and food service. Under personnel and curriculum, we're going to ask you to approve substitute teachers and support personnel, approve new parent volunteers, employee personnel, approve leave requests, approve intern assignments, approve an early graduation request, approve um, two expulsion agreements, and approve a retirement, a retirement res resignation. Under policy public relations, legislative title two, accept and follow the information committee meeting minutes of September 2nd, 2014. Final approval of board policies and administrative regulations. Tentatively approve additional board policies and administrative regulations. Under taxes, insurance, census, appoint for capital, capital and occupational residence tax collector. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Right. Harris. Uh, at this point, we would normally have a condition of visitors, but no visitors have signed up to speak. Um, that being said, our next board meeting, uh, oh, <laughs> our next board meeting is next Monday, same place, same time. Um, I'll call for adjournment. This meeting is adjourned at 7.51. Thank you. Rich, can I see you real quick?